So next up, our special guests. Now, this is the first time we have two special guests. These are the guys behind Modeloff, modeloff.com. Uh, if you go there, you'll see this is the World Financial Modeling Championship. So, man, this is exciting. I first found out about these guys on LinkedIn like a, a year or so ago when they had all the gurus from like Price Waterhouse Coopers and Deloitte and all the guys there and Bill Jones there, of course. And man, it was just, uh, it was really cool stuff. And so, uh, Johan, John, hello, welcome to the program. And, and can you tell us a little bit about Model Off before we, before we jump in? Hi guys. Hi, Sally. And first of all, thanks for having us on the show. It's so it's always so refreshing for us to find other people that are so passionate and so interesting and kind of have, share such a love for Excel and are doing really interesting things with it and kind of building a community around that. So it's uh it's wonderful to be a part of it. So look, model off, I guess, John and I both come from a, a professional services background and we've spent plenty of time sort of modeling in investment banking or management consulting in our sort of previous careers. And what we'd always noticed is that in just about every firm that you went to, there was always these guys that were brilliant at financial modeling and Excel, but they were kind of swept into the corner a little bit. And what we thought is, well, wouldn't it actually be really cool to give these guys a world stage to be able to compete against one another and use this skill, uh, this skill set that they developed to kind of compete against people and kind of write, well, who is the best in some of this kind of... Excel and financial modeling competitions. So we started sort of scouring around, and there were a few competitions out there. But we thought, all right, well, how could we actually take that to the next level and have a little bit more fun with it? And I think we then also realized there's potential huge educational benefits that can flow from that as well, whether or not you kind of, you know, this is your first year or two using Excel full time in a job, or whether or not you, you guys like yourselves that have been around Excels for, for most of your adult lives, but are still kind of learning things along the way. There was a lot that kind of people could get out of it. So we, um, we decided to put together an international competition, which was two online rounds so that people could compete from anywhere around the world. And then we felt, well, let's fly the top 16 finalists to arguably the spiritual home of financial modeling being New York and kind of Wall Street. You've got a, a lot of the sort of top finance companies there as well. Uh, and then we kind of thought, all right, well, what do we need to do to kind of make this a reality? We got Microsoft involved. We got some of the, uh, the top finance companies involved. Bloomberg were a big supporter Kaplan. very early on. Kaplan have come on sort of since. AMT wow. Training, one of the sort of biggest financial modeling training companies uh, that train yes. a lot of the banks and various yes. things like that. And some young have been a big supporter of the competition sort of throughout. So, and then of course, in terms of the Interview judges, Street. yeah, we had we run the competition on a platform called Interview Street. Uh, and then in terms of the judges, I mean, we had your uh, good friend and sort of co MVP Bill Jellin or Mr. Excel that uh, you guys had on the show last month. So we've got him involved as one of the judges in New York. Uh, so we put the competition together, and in its first year in 2012, we kind of thought, all right, this is going to be a little bit of an experiment, and it was actually a lot bigger than we uh, than we expected. So it very quickly became an annual competition. It's now in its third year. Last year, we had over 3,000 people actually compete uh, in the online rounds, and then the the winner was actually a 26-year-old female consultant from London. Who was picked up for something? Uh, yeah. First prize and, and had a wonderful time. And, and what was her name? Her name was actually Hillary Smart. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I love this. She so, works for the well, very well recognized consultancy Numeritas. Yes. Very cool. So, yeah, I, go ahead, Jordan. So you said that um, you were the the uh, feedback was actually sort of it, it grew bigger than you expected. I mean, how how large did you think it was going to be, and how big did it eventually become? So I mean, we we started the competition off as you know we, we were hoping to get kind of we were confident we could get around fifteen hundred people in the competition. Um, you know to. To, to increase it 50% the next year was good. I still think there's a lot of scope, um, particularly when you start hitting developed kind of developing countries. Um, you get deeper into certain um, societies, like some of the actuarial societies. 
um, some of the, the heavy finance societies, getting to the student societies, business schools, and things like that. So um, that, that's really a function of our marketing capabilities, uh, I see. And also finding ways to create a path for people to continue to improve. So you'll notice that we always give our questions away for free on the, on the website because we see education as a really, really important part and giving people the confidence to be proud of their skills in Excel. So um, we're all quite familiar with, I think there's like 700 million people in the world who use Excel, probably 70 to 80 million who use it quite in quite a sophisticated capacity. Um, so we'll just see, but um, we've got to keep it cool, we've got to keep improving, and um, we've got to keep finding ways to create value for people to want to keep coming back and keep improving. And I think one of the other things we've also seen is that a lot of people have looked at it and kind of gone, I'm not sure if this is for me, maybe I'm not good enough, or is it the right kind of financial modelling, and have sort of kept away in the first couple of years, but then they've had friends or colleagues that have start, said, sort of, I've done it, and I reckon you'd actually be really good at this. So I think we're actually now starting to penetrate a much broader audience of people who use Excel, but perhaps haven't thought they, they had the, the top level of skills. Wow. This is this fascinating, and and by the way, uh, Hillary, Hillary works Hillary works for Operus, as I said. You know, oh. Operus is a very well known project finance firm in the UK. Uh huh. Okay, yeah, and and there's a, a picture of Hillary. All right. Yeah, so that's Hillary receiving uh, the winner's trophy in December last year in New York, actually at Microsoft's offices. Ah, okay. All right, cool. So, John, is that is that you in the background there? Yeah. Nice, John. Sorry to, sorry to disappoint you, Rick. <laughs> you, know, so you, you get me thinking about a, a blog post I did a while ago. Are, are any of the uh, five of us musicians other than me? I do have mean beatbox. That's about it. Other musicians? Um, yeah, I, I used to play flute at a high, quite a high level. Johan's got a musical family. I actually come from a very musical background. I play guitar. Look, as far as musical talents within the financial modeling community, <laughs> uh, it's not been an area that I think we've done as much research as perhaps we need to. Well, well I'll tell you, though, is, is I think that um, people who work with data are behind the scenes like drummers and bassists. I mean, I'm serious. I, so I just what wonder, because what? When, when you talk about people like being shoved in the back, Talented people shoved in the back. The skills don't get really developed. They just get stuff to do. And I just think about, um, especially a jazz bassist, just doom, 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 just walking all the time. And then you have like Jaco Pistorius and Bootsy Collins and Victor Wooten that come out front, right? Bring it out front. And then you have band leaders like George Clinton. And, and and James Brown that will let them come out front. So you two are like James Brown and George Clinton and um, who else? Uh, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers that let Flea shine and come forward, right? And yeah, I, and I think I really it's, 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 yeah, I love that analogy. I, I, love, I think I think you're exact. I don't I don't I, I think we're still we're still having a lot of fun, which is which is the good which is the good thing. But we. Just like for us, it's about it's about empowering people, and often, yes. you know, this young gen, you know, this young generation of between eighteen to thirty five. Uh, one of our finalists last year was thirty nine year old, I think, partner from Ernst and Young in the investment banking arm, and he he just loves the analysis. But, but there are also some. We occasionally we get twenty one, twenty two year old people performing exceptionally well, and it's like you just you, you need a stage for people to dance. Yes. And whether it's music or whether it's um, accounting or whether it's Excel or whether it's it's building or whatever it is, we, you need to empower people to celebrate being excellent. And um, yep. we we try and keep a really simple objective. And uh, 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 oh, thank you for your kind of comparisons to the musical industry. But it's yeah, we're having a lot of fun and it's good. But your point is spot on, Oz, that, I mean, in society, we recognize these sports stars. We idolize these, these extreme sports athletes. And what we're trying to do in our little kind of community, in and around financial modeling and Excel and all that kind of stuff, is to be able to point to these guys and recognize and celebrate their success 
their skill, that these guys are at the top of their game. Questions that we thought were going to be impossible for people to do in 45 minutes, we watched the guy do it in 30 minutes. <laughs> yes, yes. I get it. I get it, man. And, get and, it. and you know, if you actually run an economic argument here, that sports stars get paid, you know, um, you know, in the hundreds, if not millions of dollars a year for a few years in their career. Well, if you look at a professional who does it between the ages of 20 and 70, their lifetime value of a, a professional is far higher than a, yep. uh, most athletes on the aggregate. So we're uh, we're, we're trying to go down that athlete path yep. um, and treat the the Excel and financial modelling people. Uh, giving them the credit they deserve for being outstanding, thinking, outstanding thinkers and for the way in which they push the world forward with their numbers. I, I love this. I love this. And then especially when you, we're going to talk about the other um, other contests that you run, and I really see just the analogy to a band because, right, your drums and your bass, they are the foundation. If people are mm -hmm. dancing, it's not the guitarist. A guitarist can't exactly. sit on top of a bad rhythm section. Can't do it. A salesperson can't go out and sell on top of bad data. They go sell some stuff, and then customers call and complain, and why you send me duplicate products? Why is my profile all jacked up? Because the data's messed up, not the salesperson. The salesperson's pretty. Preach. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I think that you... you Excel is one of those products, as a product, as a community, as an ecosystem, it's one of the only technologies that remain, the world turned around and said, that's awesome, and it's been like that for nearly 25, 30 years, it gets the job done amazingly, um, yes. and we feel as though, ultimately, yes, there are, there, there are, there are heaps of awesome products in the world, but for the purpose, I mean, who knows? If we're having this conversation in five years' time, maybe we, you know, we explore different aspects and different parts of how Excel modeling and financial modeling would actually work, and there might be different streams and different aspects, and that's an evol natural evolution of the competition. But um, ultimately, the fact that people choose to use this powerful tool to create insight, solve problems, yeah. make the world kind of to drive decision making on a day to day basis and it's so accessible um, it's so well supported by Microsoft and their kind of even, and a number of the community partners that you've got and we've got it's um it's something we should be celebrated and um, yeah we our ultimate vision is just like Nike has big posters of Michael Jordan all around the place we'd love one day just a, a poster with a big aspirational quote around excellence with kind of some of these top financial modelers just hanging on the walls inside yeah. organizations. We'd love oh, to see that. That's awesome. I'm getting worked up. I love <laughs> that. That's some cool stuff. <laughs> I can't get on that. You, you, know, yeah. you know, here's the thing, uh, and I was telling a friend this uh, last week, last weekend, is, you know, there are the Excel people or data people. Uh, we're not the sales people usually. Like, like Oz says, we're not usually the... the the lead singer, or the guys in the background, the ladies in the background making it happen. And and usually when you think of like a, fi a financial modeler, or you think of a data person, or you think of us Excel like people, you know, what, what you think of a lot of times is the people that you, uh, that you don't put out in front of the customer. You know, the mm. people who are just cranking out code, and the people who, who you not only probably don't talk to at work, but maybe you don't even like to brush up against them in the hallway. <laughs> you know, so, this is what you think about. But I gotta tell you, I think it's awesome that you're taking all of these people, you're taking this talent, and you're putting these people front and center on stage just to, you know, just to kind of, just to claim the microphone and just to make that happen. And I think it's beautiful that you're doing it. That you did the first one in New York because as you were telling the story of bringing all those people together from kind of all walks of life, it just reminded me of there's a TV show here in the U.S., The Apprentice. Uh, with yeah. Donald Trump, where they just bring everybody in who's got to fight for the crown right there in the middle. And it, it made me think, Oz, and maybe you can help me with this, uh, with Bill Jelen. Maybe he's not really Dan Aykroyd. Maybe he's Donald Trump. Maybe that's who needs to play him. He needs to play him. <laughs> Wait. Think about that. Hey, um, that's an idea. I had, to, I had to think about that, but I I, I get well, how you're thinking. I get got to settle in. I'm not sure whether uh, Bill mentioned this when he was on your show uh, a few episodes ago, but as far as we can tell, Mr. Excel is actually the first ever financial modeling commentator 
in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, okay. Jump onto the Model Off Facebook page. There's an album there that has a whole bunch of photos from the, the live finals that we held in New York last year. Wow. And we run a group challenge where we have an audience of about 250 to 300 people at Microsoft's office on a Sunday sitting around this little clump of tables in the middle of the room. And we actually put the finals at... Uh, finalists together, and we set them just really short, sharp, kind of innovative challenges. Uh, the actual challenges are now on our website that anyone can kind of download and try. But we have the whole crowd surrounded, and there is Bill Jellin roving around, commentating on how these guys are trying to solve these different Excel challenges. That's so awesome. So we've got the first yeah. ever financial modeling commentator. And for Jordan, it might, Jordan, it might be really interesting uh, with, with your you know, very strong technical backgrounds. It's fascinating when you watch the finalists. And I remember the first year we had two guys from Goldman Sachs that were sitting on the back two computers. And there were two guys to the right sitting on um, work on their computers. But what, the, what was beautiful about it was the different styles of Excel modeling, financial modeling. The Goldman Sachs guys were drilled, and you could see the rows going bang, 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 down, 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 like it was a clinic, like it was a clinic. And uh -huh. on the right-hand side, you had these freestyle modelers. They don't do format. Oh, they're crazy. They got tie-dye t-shirts on. They don't do styles. They just, they're, they're artistic, you know? And they just like, I, I said to one of them, I just looked at one of them, he goes, Trust me, I'll fix up the formatting later. <laughs> and I'll fix up the <laughs> later. But he goes, for me, and he goes, where I come from, it's about getting the job done, the guy said to me. And, you know, that kind of insight, and when, you, when you're dealing with this kind of, it's extreme talent, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah, the really structured, methodical approach that has been drilled into, you know, 20 hours a day, or it's kind of the real deep thinkers who kind of may not work as fast and as, Rigorously, but they prefer to think. Wow. They could do that's a hell of a lot of strokes, and they can get some What do you so think, I, Jordan? So Jordan? I think I'm a freestyler. That's what Jordan, I think I am. Jordan, that's what I think yeah. you are too. As I, as I think about the, and I think I heard that you 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 went through this competition before, and, and I could think of, I could think, and I hope you share that story as a second. But you know, I think about you doing the first contest, and I could, and, and as uh, they're just telling that story, I, I could picture you like petting your cat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the scruffy beard and just try to just do it all the coding in the background. See, I'll fix it up later. No, yeah, okay. that's that's but, that's how it is. It's kind of like if I was drawing something out, you know, um, I'd write, take notes, and I'd be like, no, I hate that. I'd rip it off, and that's what I was doing on the tabs. You know, I was doing something on a tab, and I was like, oh, this this stinks, but I want to get rid of it, so I make a new tab. I'm like, oh yeah, that I actually like that from the other tab, so I'll copy and paste that over. And this is one thing I really like about the contest. So if you're thinking about um, doing it everyone out there listening, uh, you really should, because I didn't think I could do it, so I, I let it go by the first year, and then the challenge questions came out, and I decided, um, I, I was looking through those questions, like, all right, well, maybe I, I can do this, and I did make it this year to the second round, and unfortunately, I wasn't available to take it, but this is the really cool thing that this um, Excel, or at this uh, financial modeling um, competition test, because it doesn't actually necessarily matter how you get the right answer. So it's not such a, as a technical skills, this is how you do this in Excel, although that is part of it. There are questions about functions that um, really a lot of people should know um, pretty well. But for the, uh, for the, uh, wor the problem piece, it actually, it doesn't necessarily matter how you get it done with Excel, but you do need Excel to do it because it's that big. Um, so I think that's really cool that you have all these different ways of doing it and all these different styles, but people are arriving at, um, had uh, similar answers. I, I mean, this yeah. is really, that is a skill that we should be encouraging because we, I think that we focus so much on technical analysis. What is, um, you know, do it this way and this way and we don't necessarily let modelers, well, I should say, I, I think the good companies let modelers sort of, here you go, go do it, but I think that by and large companies uh, have a very rigid view that this is how you do it in Excel. We don't use Excel for this, we use it for this. So I think it's very cool. And probably last year, was actually the first time I actually realized we actually had some finalists there who actually don't model on a daily basis, who don't use Excel on a daily basis. And, you know, they, they're they at it. They think strategically about problems and they think about insight. 
And if, you know, if I was to give a tip to people looking to compete in 2014 in the exciting competition, you know, we we do test obviously advanced Excel. With, you know, obviously accounting and um, some financial analysis skills help too, right, to get to the finals. But um, you know, it's not just about speed; it's about thinking. And um, I think there's a bit of a misconception that this is a you know a young man and a young woman's competition because um, it's all just about pounding out keys. But I think Jordan's exactly right. It's about getting the job done, um, and it's not so much about in the rounds about actually getting to the, you know. It, it's funny. The two winners that we've had, Alex Gorn, a 24-year-old from New Zealand in 2012, and Hilary Smart, a 26-year-old consultant, have both made this comment that when they actually sit down to do their questions, they'll actually take a moment to sit down and map it out before they actually jump in and touch a key. And I think that was a really interesting reflection. In a competition where speed is important, it is critical, we do people do put people under a lot of time pressure, but they're still taking time to actually visualize and map it out in their own head before they just jump into Excel. Yeah. So, so would, you, wanna, would you mind? Go ahead, Oz. I wanted to go back. Um, when you mentioned the people who, who pound out by row is very, sounds like uh, very structured versus the freestylers, can you give an idea of what you mean by bang it out row by row? So typically on a discounted cash flow, for instance, you know the structure of the periodicity of the years. You know the kind of the format of how you know the P&L, the cash flow, the balance sheet connect together. You know how the ratio analysis works. And then Jordan's laughing in the background because he he's, he's probably he's, he's got a good idea for kind of the, the methodology that some of these people do. Um, particularly if you work in a in a heavy finance environment where you're very transactional, doing a very similar type of work on a day to day basis, you get pretty quick. I would have thought. Um, and um, merger models and things like that. Like they're very, um, I wouldn't say they're certainly not templated. But when you've done, you've built five hundred of them, you get pretty good after a while. Okay. Um, whereas the freestyle kind of people might be people who have more of an operational background, a restructuring background, um, an internal Excel champion function within their company. And they're problem solvers, right? And they do things with data. They do things with the on the numbers side. They don't actually know. They've got some incredible skills, but they don't. They like to listen to the problem first before yeah. they they get yeah. into solution mode. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that that makes sense. So the people who who do this stuff on a regular basis, they can anticipate what piece needs to go where, and they might have a rhythm and a method for doing it. Versus the people uh, who really do need to think and they start to put pieces together as they go. Well, well, yeah. You, you, I mean, the, probably one of the best. If you can think of sporting teams that you know, there are some. If you look at tennis, for instance, there are some players who just serve you off the court with brute force and brute speed, you know, and hitting power. But there's other people who've got just beautiful finesse, and one's not necessarily a better player than the other, but it's they're just different types of players. Right. And um, and I think taking the tennis, you know, the, the brute force versus the, the, the elegant player um, to the, the Excel world, I think the people can start to relate to that concept. And, and, and there's a lot of people who are hybrids in the middle. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, and really, our competition is also about building on your weaknesses, right? So um, a lot of people, you know, they come from particularly strong backgrounds in one aspect, but then... Our competition gives them a reason and a, a grounds to actually build a, a broaden their skills base, um, so that they can do whether it's quantitative modelling, business modelling, Excel modelling, financial modelling, whatever you call it, um, numbers, integrated numbers analysis, yeah. um, so that you can be really good at it and you know ultimately add value to yourself and also to your company you work for. Yeah. Well, as, as we close out this segment, would, would you mind talking a little bit about the timeline? So for 2014 for the model op, would, would you mind talking about what that timeline looks like? Yes, yeah, certainly. So late October, model off will get underway with round one again. So people can uh, pre-register at the moment. We'll open up full registrations uh, about two months before the round actually kicks off. So people need to, to register for the competition. Uh, it costs $20 for students or $30 for professionals to enter. Uh, and I believe we're actually going to be giving away a few uh, free entries at some point throughout the show. So uh, people can get involved, go to modeloff.com, sign up there. 
Uh, round one is a two-hour online sort of quiz that they get involved in. We then take the top 50% through to round two, which happens two weeks later. And this is a, a, a quiz that happens simultaneously around the world, so everyone is doing it all at once. And then we fly the top 16 people to New York in the first weekend of December to compete in the finals in New York. And we do a whole variety of other things with the finalists while they're there in New York. Last year, we had a three-hour product insight session with five of the lead uh, program managers from the Microsoft Excel development team. So that was a really cool way of kind of sharing ideas of all right, the guys who are building the product actually speaking with some of the heaviest and most kind of hardcore users of that product, you put them in a room for three hours and again, you can imagine what happened to it. It was really enjoyable for, for both sides. And then on Sunday, we put them through four hours of testing in the morning and then we have a live finals event in the afternoon, traditionally held in Microsoft's office in New York where we have a, a live finals audience. This year, we're actually going to be live streaming the finals so that people all around the world can get involved, uh, so we might have to, to look at some way of tying that in with Excel TV, have a, yes. a special episode from New yeah. York or something. And it's a great thing in New York, like as Joanne was touching on but earlier on in the interview, it's kind of, in New York it's a great networking opportunity as well, that if you're in the Excel, if you're in the Excel space and you're passionate, come along and look at the drinks, you know, three, four hundred people that drinks you know, who are all passionate about Excel. It, it, it's a great night and um, it's a great it's a great function on the Sunday um, and the first week of December. So if you are passionate about it, um, yeah, I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. Wow, I need to, we need to go. We do. <laughs> we do. It's a lot Jordan. We, we need to get a bus and just make a road trip. And go no, I, think, I think we need to do really well in the competition and then we can I'm already <laughs> claiming to be a spectator. <laughs> you know, so you know, so I tell you what, I tell you what, this um I'm left with this this feeling of um like like a permission to to really be passionate about Excel. And now I'm passionate about Excel, but but you know the idea of you know you've got all of this, you've got R and um uh Tableau and all is Salesforce.com, and you want to be open to all of these tools, right? But then when you and Chandu and some of the others come on and are really committed to Excel, you know, it's like an, an even greater permission to really be passionate about it and own it. Well, I, th I think professionals of the future, Oz, are going to need to be versatile. Yes. And what I mean by that is that I think in the next five to ten years, we're going to actually see the convergence uh, in practice, right, of data and numbers. So, for instance, if you're doing a transaction, company A is buying company B for 100 million US. Um, you know, the financial model says something really powerful. And, and I, at, at the moment, I don't know a tool better than Excel, and I won't know for a while there is a tool better than Excel to do that at a really in a trusted capacity. But also, what's becoming really important is kind of customer analytics, business analytics about the acquisition target, right? Yeah. How engaged people? What are the sentiments? Um, what's the net promoter score? What's the re retention like? What's the lifetime value of a customer? But actually, not the numbers side, the data, and. To your point about Tableau and some of the other outstanding tools out there, yes, um, and R as well, right? It, it, it's important to be versatile, and I think that we're going to see a lot of people with Excel skills and um, finance and accounting skills who are really analytical anyway. I think they're going to be making a transition across to some of the other side, and I think they're going to be developing their skills back and an appreciation back the other way. Um, so ultimately, it's it's about being super strong. It's a super analyst or super analytical. Well, kind of, well you know. let, let me tell you this, though. Is in the world of a freelancer, if I'm sitting in a JavaScript class or an R class, I'm not making money. Right? And even if I do go get some book and start learning this stuff, a client will call me and they want something done in Excel. And so it's been, it's been, um, you know, over the, you know, about five years that I've been freelancing, you know, I've, I've taken a PHP course. And then somebody calls up and they want something done in Excel. <laughs> right? And PHP developers are expensive. 
and that's time consuming and the customer can't maintain that stuff when it's done. Mm. So that's that's where I'm really getting at, you know, from a professional standpoint about really owning Excel. And I feel like, um, you know, now I know some stuff about PHP, but has it helped me professionally? Well, as far as like my background knowledge, you know, because I've had a client that had me build apps, the prototype of apps in Excel because he's got his PHP developers, but they are way more expensive than I am. Have I build a prototype in Excel, turn it over to them, and say, get this working, and he doesn't have to talk to them anymore. I think, Oz, I think you need to raise your prices. That's what Absolutely. That's what <laughs> so so, uh, so, so thank you for that, fellas. So, so the way they can get a hold of you is at modeloff.com, right? Modeloff.com is follow yeah, the whole process there. Or just Google Modeloff for the Financial Modeling World Championships, and uh, it's right there. That sounds great. So, so, so thank you so much, and please, uh, please stick around for the rest, next part of the conversation.